your exit from commercial banking was a significant move. What led to this decision? Salma, first of all, thanks for having me. Um, I think that the group's exit from commercial banking um, has been seen as a massive development in the economic landscape mm -hmm. of, of Namibia. But in fact, for Trusco itself, um, the banking portfolio and the banking business in the group represented less than 1% of the total assets of the group. So um, mm -hmm. there's been a lot of, of media and press and activity around this, yeah. um, especially with the colorful history of, of how banks have you know, come, come and gone in, in Namibia. But for Trusco Group, the exit from, from banking business was a simple commercial reason. With that came some concerns as to whether those that have deposited in, in, in that particular bank, if the funds are still safe or not, what is, can you just clarify that situation? Yes, yeah, certainly. That's mm. the first question any yes. depositor should have mm. about a bank. Um, and we, together with the regulator, uh, before we embarked on, 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 on this process, uh, we made sure that each and every deposited and uh, mm -hmm. million dollar was safe. Um, so we have held at a custodi custodian account with, with Bank of Namibia every single deposit plus all interest that was earned on those deposits. Mm -hmm. And uh, we recently made an announcement in the press that uh, depositors can claim back all their deposits. Um, I think the final date is February 2025 and anything that remains after that will be placed in a guardian fund with uh, the Bank of Namibia. Mm -hmm. So um, each deposit is safe. Uh, no deposit will, will lose any money on mm -hmm. Trusco mm -hmm. Banks except have, from commercial Have they banks. started collecting yeah, their funds? We've, yeah, we've actually seen the process commence in the last couple of weeks. Okay. Um, to date, we've released about a third or 30 percent of, of deposits that were claimed, and the process is, is well on its way and running quite smoothly. Mm -hmm. But you exited before you were granted your license. Why this particular timing? So, actually, Trusco Bank was an acquisition that the group okay. did in 2015-16, if I recall correctly. Um, the former Fidesz Bank Namibia was an acquisition that the group did. We then acquired Fidesz Bank that already had a, a commercial banking license with a view to transform it into the next uh, commercial bank in, in Namibia. Mm -hmm. um, obviously some time has passed and you know, our plans didn't materialize exactly as we envisaged. But um, the, the banking license was, group, was granted to the former group and we acquired it about eight years ago. Mm -hmm. But there's also a misconception or rather uh, an impression that um, Trusco Group Holdings and Bank of Namibia has some sort of dispute or disagreement. Yeah, no, yeah. There's, let's not make any secret about that. Mm -hmm. um, we didn't, we didn't um, agree with, with Bank of Namibia on, 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 lo on a lot of things. Okay. But ultimately, both of us, Trusco Group and Bank of Namibia, we ensured that depositors were safe, and that's that's the most crucial point. Mm -hmm. but are there any other challenges, perhaps, that you experienced in the sector um, that could have led, to, perhaps, to the uh, you know delinking or exiting from the commercial? Certainly. So Namibia has got a very well-established uh, banking sector, um, predominantly from from South African banks. Yeah. Uh, one or two Namibian banks have done very well, but we've seen over the course of the last two decades <coughs> that. Um, no new bank has really mm -hmm. made it in the Namibian banking sector. Mm -hmm. So that's where our differences with Bonn actually started. How well, we aim to bring the bank to, to, to the Namibian landscape and how the traditional regulation environment was set up, I don't think is conducive to bring a new bank into the into Namibian sector. Mm -hmm. And what is the current stance now between the two institutions? So right now we'll probably go into settlement, okay. try and wrap up all the litigation. I mean, there's, there's no bone to pick anymore. And, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's the end of that. Quentin, just in addition to what you're saying, of course, I'm just wondering how this has actually impacted your investment strategies in any way. No, certainly investment strategies we reconsider on a weekly basis, on a mm -hmm. monthly basis, um, at every board meeting. So um, the specific exit from commercial banking didn't really change our investment philosophy on, on that mm -hmm. asset. So when you talk about ad addressing concerns raised by the public, how would you characterize the overall stability and transparency of Trusco? And of course, I know off the cuff of before we came on, on, on set, you were highlighting that or you, you indicated that the public certainly does have a lot of questions. And in terms of the transparency rather than stability, how would you characterize that? Yeah, stability is a precarious question. Um, the group sits with, you know, six mm -hmm. million of assets. So I don't know in, in an Namibian landscape what, what could be more stable than that. Um, Transparency, if I have to answer that question, the group is listed on three stock exchanges. We make announcements on each and every corporate activity. All the litigation we have is in the public domain. I'm here answering your questions. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what more we can do for transparency. The suspension of Trasco from the uh, JSE as well um, due to financial reporting issues. But could you just maybe 
um, extent on Certainly. what transpired, how the matter was also resolved, and how this has also just impacted your, your financials as well. Yeah, so financial reporting is, 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 a, is a difficult animal to deal with. You've got a whole group of experts at all quite opinionated on, on how financials should be put together. Mm -hmm. So in, in, the, in the shorter sense or in summary, um, our financial reporting, our audit accounts had a difference of opinion with, with the experts of the JC and we had to ask the court for guidance. Ultimately the court gave us guidance and uh, we complied immediately whatever the court held. Mm -hmm. um, that's what led to the suspension and the relisting the of the shares. Mm -hmm. yeah. And how are you handling things differently now as Trusco? To, well, to ensure that this doesn't repeat itself. <laughs> well, it's, it's not something that you can handle different. Um, experts, auditors must take a view on your financials. They ultimately express their opinion on that. Mm -hmm. And then the regulator either has to agree with that opinion or not. Um, mm -hmm. I think certainly we'll try and solve a disagreement in opinions uh, more swiftly in the future. But that's, that's the nature of business. While we're still with the GSE, um, let's also include the N NS, uh, you know, NSX. How are you currently performing and how, what would you attribute some of the successes to? Share price is not doing great now. Mm. We come out frankly and say that. I think we're about 80% down from our high. Um, Why? We, uh, well, negative press is not good for any stock price. Let's, let's, let's be frank about that. Mm. Um, but also we're not immune to the, to the environment that we operate in. I mean, we've also been through COVID. We've also been through a, a recession and a declining economy in Namibia, mm -hmm. where the bulk of our assets sit. So we're definitely not immu immune to the environment that we operate in. Um, so we see it as an opportunity to buy back as much of the stock that we can as cheap as possible, and the company is doing so aggressively. Let me just take you back to the first point where we were talking about you exiting from your commercial bank and so forth. Maybe how this has possibly impacted the country's economy? I, mean, I, I doubt it seriously, Salma. Yeah. Thanks for the compliment. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's a it's a very small small move on on yeah, an Olympian landscape. Okay. It's 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 tiny in the scale in the scale scale of things. Um, so no, I don't think it would have any impact. We also touched a little bit on diversifying investments, but um, do you believe Namibia's current investment policies are conducive, perhaps, for business growth? Is there a need for any policy reforms? What is your 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 take on that? Well, one can always aspire to do better, Salma. Mm. Um, but Namibia currently is an absolute hot commodity on the world stage. I mean, the recent recoveries or discoveries of our, in our energy sector and the stability we have in Namibia. So Namibia, whenever we travel abroad and we speak about Namibia, we get a very, very positive reception. So mm -hmm. that, that, that bolts well for, for all business and, and attracting foreign capital to Namibia. Mm -hmm. Were there any investment decisions that Transco perhaps made that in hindsight you regretted? You know, hindsight is a perfect science. Um, and I could sit here and, mm -hmm. and tell you about a lot of things that we could have done better and, you know, a lot of things that I might have done different. However, I don't think there's one investment at the time that we made it that um, weren't considered a good investment. Mm -hmm. I think what we could have done different is once we've realized that a specific investment did not follow the route that we envisaged for it, to maybe pivot a little bit quicker or mm -hmm. maybe change our minds or adapt to that a little bit quicker. You can always be faster, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't change much of what happened. Mm -hmm. Speaking of success, of course, let's just shift the focus a little bit uh, to, to mining. Your diamond mining investment in Sierra Leone appears quite successful as well. Could you provide more details about this venture and perhaps its impact and how it benefits your, your portfolio? Certainly, it's, mm. it's, it's been an exciting ride. The group has invested north of 120 million US dollars into that specific asset. And it's really performed tremendously well. Um, we recovered, uh, I'm sure you've seen in the, in the recent press, uh, two spectacular uh, mm -hmm. diamonds, a 391 carat diamond, yes. which was quite, quite something. And uh, four years ago, we also recovered a 476 carat diamond. So that asset has proven to be a large stone producer, um, really quite something. And uh, more importantly, it produces uh, forex revenue for the group. You know, we are tied to the rand and mm. the million dollar. Yeah, the pay. So. Any, any business that um, provides a natural currency hedge, you know, and raising and, and producing some currency for us abroad that we can bring back to Namibia, mm. it's very positive for us. Mm -hmm. So, so because that was actually going to be my next question, maybe just in addition to the, to this, the general plans for valuation and sale for this particular discovery. So that asset first must bring back what we took out. Okay. So first of all, we'll try and recover as much as of our initial investment. And then, uh, then we see what the future holds. You know, mm. diamonds have got a bright future currently. And, uh, you know, we're in the business of, of entering and exit businesses. 
So uh, when the next opportunity comes along, we might exit it, we might increase our stake. We'll, we'll take a view then. Mm -hmm. So what makes the geological characteristics that make the Kara district in Sierra Leone more favorable for this? So that district, I mean, it's well written, well documented, is, is one of the areas that's produced, I think, six or seven of the largest diamonds ever recovered worldwide. So it's, it's no mystery that um, we started recovering these type of diamonds in that area. But, you know, it brings its own challenges. It's a difficult environment to operate in. You know, the, the geopolitical situation yeah. is, is quite tricky. But, you know, that's where the, op that's where the opportunity lies. Mm. And, and, and Trasco is definitely going to take advantage of those particular opportunities? Look, we, we're, in the, we're in the business to create value for our shareholders. And there where we can invest and, and create value for everyone that's along for the ride, we'll definitely take it. Mm -hmm. The other thing as well is that Legal Shield has been performing quite well over the years. What would you attribute that to? The Namibian environment. Mm. There is no better story than, than um, short-term and life insurance coupled with property in Namibia. So uh, those are some of the first investments that the group made uh, more than 25 years ago. And they still hold value and they, they keep on growing. Mm -hmm. Let's just, again, expand a little bit more on how Trusco Group's holding has set some strategic plans in place. Talk to us about this, about this particular plans in terms of growth as well and just um, somehow growing the investment landscape in the country. So we've been on an acquisitive spree the last decade where we would acquire assets outside of what we usually do. But I think our near-term and medium-term future is to to really enhance the value of the of the assets that we and in, the investments we currently hold. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we look at the insurance and, and the property portfolio coupled with, with the resources division, we really want to gain value in, in what we currently hold. We also know that the economic um, you know, climate hasn't been that favorable for the past few years. Has this impacted your operations in any way? Yeah, certainly. Mm. You know, we had to close down certain businesses um, during COVID. Construction industry is the first one that came to mind really stopped and halted in its track. So yeah, we had to pivot. We had to make a couple of tough decisions. And again, we're not immune to the environment that we mm -hmm. operate in. Any, any plans on reviving this particular business? Construction, um, not, not at the moment. Mm -hmm. I think there are construction companies in Namibia that's really worth their salt and that could probably do a better job externally than what we could do internally. Mm -hmm. Any other plans for Trasco? What other businesses or, you know, that you're trying to venture in right now? So I'll be difficult not to venture into something that I cannot say publicly, yeah, but okay. um, we've got a Namibian focus and we've got an African focus and uh, we will definitely expand on the assets and the investments we currently own.